things that it, we've got two hours to cover um uh video uh making videos which is it's very short um and it's it's something that i'm i'm not an expert in but as i've over the years that i've actually worked on it I, i've got more and more experience of making videos of a certain type of a particular way um and particular particularly um videos for use with with community groups um th so the way that i'm going to talk is not the definitive way to shoot a video um and you're not going to end up as martin scorsese at the end of this i'm afraid <laughs> <laughs> but um, but we are. It, it'll give you an overview, and it might give you the chance to actually get started, or it might. Um, I will do a little bit of technical stuff later on. Um, you might just want to think. Look, I don't need to know this, but I'm going to look at it because I'll be working with other people who will be using this sort of stuff. Um, so the 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 talk today is going to split mainly into two parts um similar actually to the podcast thing that i did before um in that the first part is actually shooting the video and the second part is editing it and actually producing it and getting it out there um there's a follow-up session of just an hour um next week and i've asked my colleague sophie um to because she makes videos but she makes them in a slightly different way and she shoots edits and publishes all of her videos um, on her phone but they're very perfect they're really professional and she uses them in her Priscelli Hartland's project um, she and, and because she's first language Welsh as well she um, by making videos bilingual is another thing that she'll be able to talk about although I've been doing that as well um, so that's next week. So next week is a bit of a self-contained one in that it is going to be specifically to phone only uh, and using apps. The bottom line to this, today's and next week's, is making it, I wouldn't say simple, but trying to take the, 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 the sort of scariness out of making a video. Um, where do you start? And even if this, this thing prompts you to think, oh, I might experiment with this or I might experiment with that um, and just have a go, that's fine. Or lean on somebody else to have a go <laughs> in that you've seen what, what actually happens and what's involved. Um, yeah. Uh, the, oh, the other thing that I wanted to say, um, now that we, we you know, uh, we can say where the toilets are and the fire doors and all that sort of stuff. If you would like to tap, have, um, I, I'll, I'll ask you round about sort of five to four, we'll see how things go. If you'd like to have a little break for 10 minutes, just to sort of move around even, um, and do something like that. If you think, no, let's just pile on and go that's fine. Um, but I do re realise just sitting and listening to me chunter on for two hours um, is, could be, uh, um, well, we shall see, it might be wonderful. Um, the other thing is, now, as far as asking questions, the way I normally do things is that if there's something that's bothering you, um, then ask me a question, just ask me a question as we go, because it's usually something I've forgotten. Um, and usually at the beginning of one of these things, I think, good heavens, I've got two hours. How am I going to fill two hours? And then when it comes to like one, one hour and 55 minutes, I've run out of time and I can't do it. So if I say, right, we will have questions at the end. And usually for me, when they do questions at the end, I've forgotten what I wanted to ask anyway by the time you get there. So ask a question. Um, if I'm talking to you like this, just raise a hand or get in touch with Maria and shield to the button. Um, if I'm share, if I'm sharing my screen, um, and Maria, are you going to leave halfway or something or? No, I'm going to. I'm going stay to for the duration. All yeah, right. I'll keep an eye on the chat if you want, John. Well, and then I'll... Yeah, do that because if I'm sh sharing a screen, um, I won't see any hands. Um, I'll just see that. So if if you ask Maria and Maria just sort of rudely butts in, um, then then that's absolutely fine, and we'll just we'll just move on um, from that. But I do not mind. Um, I would prefer it if you just asked. John, can just be clear. Because last time I just unmuted and asked a question and, and I didn't use chat. So you want us to go through Maria? 
Is that what you're I saying? I think that's probably going to be the best way, actually. Okay. Yes, go through Maria, and Maria, if you just do that. Oh, I do apologise, Shirley. Um, was it answered in the... Well, no, I'm not going to do podcasting. I will come, we'll, we'll work to, with podcasting together on another day. Right, okay. Eyes down, here we go. Um, it was about, uh, I'd say about three years ago, that myself and um, a colleague at Planet we went on a course on making um, videos for social media and it was two days in um, Salford in um, Media City, Salford, um, which was fantastic. We were thinking, great, we're going there, there's Coronation Street, there's the BBC um, channel uh, radio six six music and all this sort of stuff so it was actually in the heart of all these things in Salford and the the thing was delivered by um a reporter um a news reporter who actually goes has to make a video on the ground at the time edit it get it out there for the news in and turn it around in within hours um and so we're thinking great it's going to be good. We were quite apprehensive, though, because I was thinking, I don't know if I can operate one of those great big TV cameras. Um, how am I going to look? Um, do I need makeup? All this sort of stuff. Um, and when we got there, uh, it was a really minimal amount of uh, kit that we were using. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the kit that we used. We were, to be brutally honest, we were a little bit disappointed um, when they showed us what we were going to do. Um, but it works and it's great and it works on, for a number of different reasons. Similar to what I said in one of the previous ones is that your bottom line is that if, if you're filming somebody else, the point is you've got to put them at their ease. If they're really nervous, they're going to clam up and it's just, and it just becomes obvious and it just, it's, it's not, it, it feels awkward. And certainly if you're wanting to advertise your organisation or talk about how you work in a community, you want people to just be chatting and doing stuff that way. Um, I'll give you an example. So we, 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 we went on this course, we learned how to do the things. And um, this was one of, the, one of the first ones that I made, actually. So I'm going to share my screen now um, and see. There we are. And so what we did was um, we had... Um, instead of, so this was the Ju Jubilee Hall in Burton. No, Burton Jubilee Hall is actually in Houghton, but we won't go into that. Um, and rather than just say what they did, um, we had um, some of these sort of, we made little videos for them. I'm John Caller, and uh, I teach American Square Dancing. I teach series of movements, and I choreograph each dance as it comes, so the dance is going to what's coming next, and I'm not sure myself what I'm going to say next, so everything's a surprise to everybody. So we just go with the plus, see what So the reason, we, we did those little ones, mainly because, so I offered it to different halls, and to say, well, rather than just say the square dancing in Burton Hall, um, why don't you uh, and just list it and say call this number which is a little bit sterile um why not make a very short video that one's about a minute 20 seconds very short um and it's just cutting in it's showing the people what they're doing and it's got background noise um it's got the caller talking to the camera there's a little bit of text at the beginning um and that's it the reason for doing it that way is that if you're in the sort of Burton environment <laughs> sort of area and you think oh do you know what I'd quite like to do Scottish dancing but I bet they're all great and then you look at it and you think oh she goes oh that person goes and and all that sort of stuff and you think oh right yeah it makes it a little bit more accessible and actually when I went to film there um, they all said oh no we need to practice we need to practice so that we can get um, we can get ourselves really sort of uh, good for the video. And I say no, because they actually, in one of them, they make a mistake and then they all, they all fall about laughing um, and then carry on. And again, that's part of it, makes it a little bit more accessible, a little that makes their group a little bit more approachable. Um, but um, it just, 
it gives it a bit of a flavour as to what the group is actually like. And so I started, so when we got back from Salford, they were the first sort of videos that I made, um, which was looking at the um looking at different events so we did short map bowls um there was another american line dancing in penali and scottish dancing and all sorts of things going off around the county um and it was fun and it's a fun type thing to do since then um we've been making all sorts of other little videos either to promote Planet and what they and the work that Planet does but also other groups such as with tia Coid, um, all over the place. I, I'm not going to list them all, but a lot of them. Um, and it's just so much more approachable than reading a lot of text. John, can I just jump in? Shirley's put something in, in, the, te yes. in the chat box about sound quality. Can you read that? Do you want me to read it out? I, I, um, I, I'm one thing that I noticed, um, sound quality is an issue on film, the background noise is too loud compared to the speaker. Yeah, um, that is something I will cover, I can cover, um, and it's something that um, I hadn't intended to, but that's pr precisely why I wanted people to cut in and actually do that. Um, yeah, no problem at all. Um, in that one, that, that, that little video thing that I showed, um, I, I know, oh, I'm trying to do share, let me get rid of that. In the one that I, uh, I showed, there was background noise, and I wanted to have the, um, the, the noise that there was chatter it was a it was a busy sort of group but you can cut that out and in fact leading on to it this is how you do it or well, one of the ways right so i'm going to talk about all the gadgets you can buy so this was the bit where we felt a bit a uh, bit miffed when we first joined up in um at salford and all that that video that i just showed then and the, the, a lot of the videos 90 percent of the videos that i shoot now we do on an iPod Touch. Um, and we do it on an iPod Touch for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, the, the, the video quality is good. Um, and it's, it, it, we shot when we did the, um, the chariot uh, excavations. Um, we shot a lot of the excavations on this. And then it was shown in the uh, Merlin Theatre at, the, um, at the college on the big screen. And it was great. It was good. You could, it wasn't all pixelated or dotty or anything like that. It was good enough quality to show on the side of a wall. Um, so we thought, oh, great. You know, we're going to do it with the iPod Touch. You might be thinking also, well, I've got a much better camera on my phone. Um, but the benefit of the iPod Touch is you're not using your personal phone to shoot video of people. Um, so that I might say, oh, I've got a great phone, um, but I'm not using my personal phone to take photos of people. I'm using this, this is Planet's iPod Touch. And when I've shot the video, I can delete it afterwards. The other nice thing about the iPod Touch is, um, and if I was filming you, I would be having it like this so that I can talk to you and I've got the iPod Touch like this. It's not that intrusive. It's not that well, literally in your face as a, a camera with a big old lens sort of sticking out in that after a little while, you can pretty much forget. And if I hold it like this, you can be talking to me, um, but the camera's there and you can almost forget about it. Holding it like this, though, is an issue. Um, and so the other bit of kit we got um, which we recommended was this basically it's a selfie stick but it's got a nicer handle I, I chose one with a wooden handle um, and on the top there's a, a sort of clamp on a spring and you put the the um, the thing in there like that and so normally if I'm shooting a video I will stand like this um, and then ask the questions so as before if I was going to be interviewing, um, I, I, I won't, Maria, but if I was going to be asking, uh, interviewing Maria about Together for Change, um, I would be saying, normally we'd talk and I'd be doing it like this. I'd have the camera up already and I'd be chatting away and I wouldn't be recording. And I'd say, well, right, we're going to talk about this. We'll, we'll cut in. But would you then say who you are, who you work for um, and what your organisation does? 
and then we will start recording. And so Maria would then say, well, my name's Maria and I work for Together for Change and we do blah, 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 blah. And then you can stop and then we about, I don't know, um, the cream teas that you have on a Friday afternoon. So I'll, and then, oh, Maria, oh yeah, the cream teas, they're really enjoyed by most people um, on a Friday afternoon. And then what I'll do though, is I will cut out um, the, the bit that, um, that I'm actually asking. So then it'll smoothly go through saying, I'm, I'm Maria, I work for Together for Change. We do da 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 da. Oh, and the cream teas that we do on a Friday afternoon. And so there's none of me in there. Um, it's just Maria nice and sort of smoothly. Although there would be a little jump, there would be a little gap between Maria finishing off saying what Together for Change was and then moving on to the cream teas, which is some, a little gap that we need to fill. So that's shooting the video, is just shooting it with this. I've got a kit list that I've made uh, basically with the prices of the things, which I can send to Maria if people wanted just basically the things that I'm going to hold up um that uh, just how much they cost so the video is one thing but as shirley was saying sound is quite another and there's a couple of different ways of doing it um the main sort of kit that we used in salford were these um they are radio microphones um and they're battery operated they're made by a company called road um, but it's a, a an o with a slash through it so rood or something i don't know um but it's it they're, they're, they're ones one goes into the camera like this so i can connect this one into the camera i can stick that into my back pocket be talking away uh me not talk it uh, the other thing is i can say it won't really pick me up at all because the microphone's being used by this radio link. The other person then has one of these in their back pocket and a lapel mic or a lavalier. Uh, there we are, which just sort of clips like there. Um, and, a lot, and the videos that I'm gonna show you, um, they use that. Now this, if you put it there, cuts out all the extraneous sound. All the, all the surrounds, so ambient noises and things like that. And it, it really does focus um, the voice um, to the person who's actually talking. Um, I'll admit, um, Molly, are you going? I can see you, Molly. <laughs> Molly's waving and I've got another yes. question as well after Molly. Oh, come on, let's have the questions, yeah. Go ahead, Molly. You're on mute, Molly. <laughs> It was about the uh, communicating with the person that you're filming. Um, do you tell them ahead of time what it is you want from them and what it is you expect? Or does that build in them a, a feeling that they're dancing to your tune rather than... Yes, rather than I know you what you're saying. Yes, I know. Um, to be brutally... We, we've, we've agreed the theme of the, of, of the video in that usually... Um, I'm not trying to trip them up. So although this was a, a, a reporter who, who taught us how to do these sort of things, for things like um, the line dancing in Penali, for example, they want to advertise their yes, yeah. group and to show how good it is. And I just say to them, look, you don't have a script. You don't have to think of anything. I'll just prompt you mm -hmm. um, and then I'll cut me out so it'll seem seamless. Don't don't think because whenever people seem to be on camera um your mind just goes blank and you yeah. think oh what was i going to say or I don't and i said don't worry i'll ask you i'll just keep the conversation going and then i'll remove my my little bit it depends an awful lot on the video i mean what you're wanting to do for me doing community ones i'm wanting to put them in their best light so i'm not trying to make them feel um feel uh, undermined or, or in any way sort of wary of what I might say mm -hmm. um, and in some ways as well it it gives them a little bit of confidence if you can then just 
take it's it's a fine line between taking charge and dancing to the, your tune yes, sort of thing yeah. um but if you can be a little bit more confident and just say this is what we're going to talk about this is what we'll talk about um and then at the end i'll show them the video once it's edited and just say look i'm are you happy with this mm. yes it is it's uh it it, it it's all sort of nuanced as to yeah as, as to how it is but thank you yeah it's okay so, and maria there was another yeah, yeah. Are, there, are there alternatives to holding up the, the yes system? there are yeah. yeah um so if i show you so we've got this like this and even though it's a light bit of wood and it's just an ipod touch if you're holding it up for a length of time it gets heavy and also you might be um well as i get older i'm getting more wobbly <laughs> and so you don't want it to look like the blair witch project or anything it's got to be nice and sort of solid like that you can get um what's called a gimbal which instead of just having this connector um, to there, it's almost it's got like the thing that the ship's compass has, um, so that if you move around, the actual iPad or iPod stays steady. They're quite expensive, and if I'm honest, uh, we had one at Planet, and I don't like using it because it tends to have a bit of a mind of its own, and it starts wandering off um, and looking at other things. So I, the gimbal is more, um, more of a hassle than it, than it looks. But what you can do with this is, of course, is let me unscrew it without. There. So that unscrews. It's a standard screw fit. And you could put that and screw it onto the top of a tripod. So you could have this solid on a tripod by the side, have it set up, um, and then you can just do your talking and then you're just there and you're just talking to the actual person. Um, but the thing on the little tripod is just sat by the side. And I don't know if I have one to hand. I'm sure I do. I'll find it as soon as I, as soon as I stand up, I've seen it. You can get these things called a gorilla pod, which look like um, three legs um, that uh, look like a set of beads and you could glue it. Uh, you can screw that into the top of that thing and attach it. Now, the problem with that is that certain, now some people, when they're talking to the camera, stand stock still and just talk to the camera. Myself, if I start getting animated about something, I'll wander around and I'll move about. And if you've set your camera up on a tripod and they start wandering off, then you, you end up with just like a bit of their face or something. So it's, it can be more of a hassle. The other thing is I'm, I'm, quite, I'm quite long and tripods, I'll kick them over, I'll trip them over them and I just get into a right old mess. But if it helps, then a tripod, you can just screw this directly into a tripod and it'll, it'll work just fine. It's amazing how stable this is though. Um, the other thing is, you don't have to shoot the video on your own. In a lot of ways, you can have it as a two-person job. Um, and we did do this once in that you can have, I, I'll be doing all the holding the camera and, and the, all the gizmos and all that sort of stuff. But then I have um, somebody with me who will ask the questions and talk. And so I don't have to do it. Normally it is just me doing it with, with the camera and you just pick it up and go. But it depends on the actual, um, the actual setting in itself. Now then, this is something that seems like such a minor thing when you actually shoot the video, but it, it causes so many headaches later. The first thing you've got to think about really is where what your video is for, where, where you're going to put it. If you're putting it onto somewhere like Instagram or TikTok, normally you will shoot your video like this in portrait mode. If you're wanting to show it though on, um, on a screen, um, to on a projector, say you're, you're, or you're wanting to put it onto um, other types of social media, I would put it in landscape mode that way. Whichever way you choose, keep it that way. If you keep it in landscape mode when you shoot the video, it's a lot 
you've got a lot more um, variation as to how you edit it afterwards. So that if you want to mix in other films, like say from a drone or things that have been photographed by other people, um, it's a lot easier to do it if you've got it set up in landscape mode. The other thing is that if you're shooting a video that um, and you're editing together a, a video that, lot of, that a lot of other people have shot, or you ask people to say, could you contribute? I want to have the voices of Together for Change. Could you contribute five seconds just saying who you are? Make sure you say to them, can you shoot it in landscape though? Because when you put it all together, you'll get some coming like this, some like that, and it's just distracting um, and just looks unprofessional. Um, so choose a format for your actual video and stick with it. It makes your life so much easier later. Going back to, so we, we, all we've got is the person in front of us. We're talking about the person and um, we've decided we're going to shoot it in landscape and we've decided yes uh, we're going to shoot it in landscape and it's going to go on our website and uh, we'll upload it to YouTube as well maybe and um, it's going to be this one's going to be um, an, an interview between myself and an expert on fruit and veg. So almost going back to um, sort of Molly's question sort of hinted at it as well is that it's probably going to be you or one of your colleagues who's going to have to edit the film afterwards. Now I said quite facetiously with the, with the podcasting but it's true is that you can make your editing life so much easier if you just don't make any mistakes when you shoot it um, and it's a similar sort of thing for the video although with the video you're going to try and cut yourself out um, so that it's just the other person talking. So it's nice to have a thought of maybe what you're going to ask as far as the way the interview is going to go because you could, if you're thinking about the end product of the actual film at the end you can you can shoot the video clips in sequence or shoot the video clips so that they have some sort of logical sort of connection with each other because when you come to put them together at the end it makes life a lot easier not impossible but a lot easier and it's this thing which it makes um putting together videos that other people have shot such a nightmare because you can sh shoot the video knowing that you're going to have to edit it so you shoot the things that make it um, make it better. And the trouble is you're going to say, well, all right, how do you make it better? It's one of these chicken and egg things is that until you do the editing, you don't know the video shooting and then you shoot and then you don't know what to shoot, what look for when you're shooting until you've done the editing. And it's just a case you've just got to jump in and have a go. And everybody's slightly different as to how they actually do it. For me, I try to do it in a logical sequence just to make my editing life easier. But I'll warn you, if you have edit, and, and we've done it where we have other people sort of contributing their things, putting it together and trying to think about what they were trying to show in their video is, is very difficult. The other thing to think about is that when you're shooting, before you even shoot your video, is are you actually shooting a video with somebody else talking? Is it like uh, somebody presenting and talking about the things that are behind them? Um, is it a face-to-face -face thing or is there going to be anybody in it at all? It could be you showing um, on, on your site, I don't know, you might be running a, a village hall and you say, right, we've got some uh, fantastic new facilities. I would love to show you the, uh, the, our new kitchen. And so basically the go round, show the kitchen, but you don't want to have somebody in front all the time. So they're showing all the kitchen, but then and this makes the, the, the audio quality even more control over the audio, audio quality, you could record a voiceover afterwards. So that you show the video, edit it, cut it into the right sort of segments, and then once that's been done, you can use, say, a USB microphone connected to your computer um, and then edit uh, and then record over the top of it. And then you've got very nice clear and you can make sure your room is nice and soundproofed 
um, so there's not too much echo, that's going to up the clarity even more so. Um, it's not going to, you can't really do that so much for um, a, an interview, um, but I would use the lapel mics for that. Right, so we were saying about uh, shooting, let's say for example, I'm shooting a video, just somebody else explaining. And I gave the example right at the beginning of um, me doing a little interview with Maria saying, would you tell me about Together for Change? And I said, the first bit was, um, Maria, would you tell me about Together for, introduce yourself and tell me about Together for Change. And so, yes, hello, I'm Maria and uh, I work for Together for Change. We do da da da. Um, and then um, I'll d I, I said, would you tell us about the cream teas on a Friday? Yes, okay, here, yeah, we have cream teas on a Friday, whatever. And I said, what I can do is cut out me saying, oh, thank you very much, tell me about the cream teas on Friday. Um, I just have Maria going together for change straight into cream teas on a Friday. But there would be, so as Maria finishes, and I do apologize, Maria, um, I'm going to be you for the minute. <laughs> um, so uh, Maria finishes off saying, um, and we do a lot of work in the community. Cream teas on a Friday are really great. We, we enjoy having them. And so you would see there was that, that jump, there'd be, a, there'd be a clip because you've chopped me out. And so Maria might have moved a little bit. She might have changed her expression. Um, nobody really looks at the camera and doesn't change their expression and doesn't change where they look. Uh, I was frozen. John's gone blank. I think John's got stuck there, Maria. He's still on the call. <laughs> uh, does he even know? <laughs> you might not know. Oh dear. A second. You're going to have to take over, Reese. <laughs> <laughs> he's dropped he's, off the call. So. Yeah, I think he's lost connection. Yeah, he's trying to get back in again. Should we take a break until he comes back or? It's up to you. Might, might be worth having a five minute comfort break now if anyone needs one. Just to give I them think a that's a good idea. Maybe good idea. idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put the kettle on. <laughs> good. Uh, back. <laughs> was that me or did I break? Yeah, that was you. I don't know how much you spoke about. We, we're just going to have a quick five minute coffee tea break. Good so. idea. Um, yeah, good idea. <laughs> Exactly. It's, it's pre I was getting very close to the, the bit. Maybe my internet. Right. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that.
Oh, well, how, how far had I got? Um, what was the last thing you heard? You were about to say how you, you plug the gap between someone oh, talking. Not much there. Uh, that, that's pretty much it, yes. Um, and that, actually, it's, it's quite a good point to, to actually stop, stop on. Um, so we just got three more people to come back in the room. Just give them a yes. second. Yes, no, 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 that's fine. Yeah. Um. I don't know if I'm jun jumping the gun a bit, I'm sure mm. you will come to it, but combining the sound to the video, um, if you're using a separate radio mic, uh, I presume it's sort of MPEG files, that type of thing. They, they they ca it can be, yes. Um, so yeah, connecting it all together and mixing it together is, is, is an issue. Um, it's, 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 normally what I do is um, I only have one person mic on a mic um, so the person that I'm talking to I keep it really simple rather than having lots of people um, mic'd up in that way in which if you did you'd have to have some sort of little mixing desk or a way in which you can combine them in. Um, it's an interesting question if you wanted a group of people to talk um, you could have a separate mic. The, the easier thing would be to have a separate mic and then a, a, a mixing desk and come in and you could choose all the levels. Doesn't sound the simplest, but it, it, it is. Um, because, and I don't know if people are sort of coming back, but, but, but be, the other thing is if you record people separately and then try to match the voice up with the movement of people's lips, it's really difficult to synchronize the, the sound with that. Um, you'd think, oh, that would be the easiest. I'll just record everyone and then mix it all together. It's, um, it, it, it takes ages just to make sure. And somebody just has to be a fraction off and it's really noticeable and quite distracting. So, uh, yeah. So I mean, you, the video editing, you can put sound files on the video editing file as well, I assume. So you just simply yeah. dump them into it. Yes, yes, you can. Um, in fact, I can show you an example. Um, shall, shall I start again, Maria? Can I? Yeah, I think everyone's Wyndon's yeah. um, camera is off. Everyone else. That's is fine. Back. Well, I'll answer Martin's um, point here actually, because it will also um, it, it'll be something that I think uh, it would be useful for Shirley as well. Um, as far as just clarity, voice clarity. Um, 
first of all, everybody, I'm really sorry. That was my internet must have just had a little glitch. So, um, yeah, I was chatting away and no, nobody was there. So here we are. Anyway, I'm going to show. Uh, oh, would you make me a co-host again, please, Maria? And then I can. Thank you. Uh, right. I will show you. Um, there we are. Uh, so I, I did this one before it, when I was showing you the, the video clip. So you can download now this audio library down here is so that you can have background music if you want to. If that's good, if you don't have people talking um, and if you do have people talking, then you need to cut out the um, the audio, the, the, the music while they talk. Um, if I don't get to that, please remind me and I'll, I'll, I'll say how you do that. But if you wanted, so this audio library is purely for putting music onto videos for YouTube. But I use it for all sorts of things because it's a nice source for um, uh, copyright free um, uh, soft, uh, music. This is one I did earlier, actually, where we did something about lockdown, um, some lockdown walks. And if I, um, I don't know if I can actually play it. Let me play it. Um, this is the bottom of Main Street, Langham. On the left hand side is one of our two chapels. So we were doing a little walk where we were moving around Langham and I was talking afterwards. Um, but what I did do was. This is the bottom of Main Street, Langham. So I don't have any of the. Um, I don't have the, um, stop sharing that now. I don't have any of the noises of Langham going on. It is just me talking. And that was, I recorded the video different bits. I didn't record the whole walk because that would have taken about half an hour and that would be too much for anybody. Um, so I chopped little bits out of it. And then when I had it all edited together, I sat at my kitchen table, which is why it's a little bit echoey. Um, I sat at my kitchen table with, this microphone um, and then just described what I saw on the screen. Um, it means that I have a lot more control over the audio in that respect um, by, by doing that afterwards. What I could have done, and this is what Martin was asking, I think, is that I could have recorded the audio separately and then mixed them together because I don't appear on that video. I could have had somebody else do that and put it together. We did do this actually last year for an archaeology day where we showed, um, we made videos. It was Sophie and I who's going to be talking to you next week. Um, we filmed uh, a place, uh, a hill fort up in the Preselis called Voil Dragan. And then we uh, sent one of those little Zoom recorders that I was talking to you about before. And we sent it to um, a storyteller in North Wales and she had recorded some stories. She recorded some stories for us in Welsh um, about living in what it must have been like to live in one of these sort of roundhouses. And then we mixed that in um, as well um, with other, um, other, other people talking, interview and that. So you can have a lot of different input sources. How you do it is the next bit. So this is a bit where it can get um, just a little bit, a little bit technical. Um, before I do though, I'm just gonna go and show you uh, just while we've got it. This is the kit, th that's the kit that I was using. Um, I'll give you a list of it, but again, I'm, I'm showing you Amazon. There are other places to buy these things. Um, but um, I use that Roadlink Filmmaker maker kit. It's not cheap, um, but it does work and it's very clear, um, the sound quality. The big downside to this is that it's got batteries in that compartment in the receiver and it's got batteries in the transmitter. If the batteries go, the person can be chatting away um, and talking about what they're doing um, and you don't know. Um, and it's not recorded. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit of a nightmare, that one. Normally what I would do is have headphones on so that I know that I'm actually receiving sound. But again, that's a downside of using the, um, the iPod Touch in that um, with the iPod Touch, you're already using the microphone jack um, to 
plug the uh, the microphone in. So I always use fresh microphones, uh, fresh batteries when I use that microphone. So um, we used it to record um, a number of different things. We did one. Um, I'm going to show you some some ones that I recorded with. Um, with somebody who was actually good at presenting. He, he's a seasoned presenter who's even been on Time Team. Um, he's that famous. Um, and he was talking about some of the, um, the ancient rocks up in the Preselis. Um, he was a joy. You, you could just talk to him and just say, tell me about Wine Mound. And he just went off on one. And he talked well, he presented well. He was just so used to it. Um, and like, for me, uh, and also he's a lecturer um, at, at uh, UCL in London. And so confidence wasn't really a problem in, in, in talking. So he, he was great. So I'll talk to you a, a bit about what, um, what, how I shot um, the pictures with him. So here we go, share screen. So when I shot the video, I, I took a lot of different ones um, uh, of lots of clips of him talking. Also these ones that say DJI, um, I took a little drone up there and flew around um, and that was some extra types of shots. Now you can notice so that there's about three here that definitely have the person in it who's talking but there are some other ones that don't actually show anything. They're just showing the surrounding area of the Pacelli's. Um, and this is how I use, this is what I use to stitch together the bits where, for example, Maria stops talking about Together for Change and then starts talking about the cream teas on a Friday. It's called B-roll. Um, and it's basically, an, it's an elastoplast that sticks the things together. So let me start this one off. Um, oh, you, I'm going to stop the share and start sharing with the one that's actually playing now. So this is me started. So he's not even in the picture. You can see his lapel mic. Nice. It's the one that I've just waved at you. Um, so here he starts. Yes. So we're moving around. Yes. I'm chatting. He's chatting. Okay. Because it's a radio mic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right then. Well, shall we go? Yeah. Yes. Right. Well, I'm Mike Parker Pearson from the Institute of Archaeology at UCL. The University. So he started talking. We, we were having a little bit of chat beforehand. Um, we'd been talking a little bit before. I didn't really need to put him at his ease because he, he, he was pretty confident anyway. But one thing that um, I, I couldn't really tell you about it until I could show you it. The other main benefit, and I think the real benefit to me for shooting in landscape is that I can have the person that I'm ta that's talking, um, the person being interviewed, but then I can have in the background the context of what he's talking about. So he's gonna be talking about these standing stones up in the middle of the Preselis. This is the one you might have seen the thing where um, the work that he's been doing with Lon uh, University College London is that they think the original Stonehenge was built there in the Preselis and then taken over to Stonehenge. Other people don't think so, um, but we're not going to go into that. Um, but he's think and he's got a very sort of forceful argument as to how he, how he can prove that the stones were moved from where they are and this is one of the remaining stones so he's given this 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 talk plenty of times but rather than just have him talk about a stone we went up to the Priscelli's had a stone in the background um, and so he could talk about the actual environment and where they are if we have him talking college london and we're here on a splendid day at Wine Mound. Uh, Wine Mound is in the Priscelli Hills of North Pembrokeshire. You might see as well that I'm moving the camera very slightly because he is moving. Um, so I am slightly, I'm trying to keep him in that left hand third of the picture um, so that the bulk of the photo shows what he's talking about in the background. Now, I'll admit, there is some background noise. You can hear the wind in there, in that microphone, and I, that could be distracting. And there's a couple of things that you can do about that. 
one of them is to put on 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 that actual lapel mic the end of it you can get what looks like a little fluffy mouse and you can put that on it looks it becomes much bigger but it cuts out the wind noise an, an awful lot um, the fact that it's actually close to his chest makes it uh, picks up what, the vibrations from his chest as well. So that makes it nice and clear. But getting rid of that other noise, um, those sort of things will will get rid of it even more. The other thing that you can do is in the editing. And this is what I did. So that was Mike and he's doing a little bit of talking and then he. Um, uh, I want to get rid of that bit where I'm chatting with him and the camera's sort of waving around all over the place. Um, and so what I want to do is start doing a little bit of editing. And I'll show you what I mean by B-roll. There are two main, well, the, when I do my editing for the, um, for this, uh, for making a video, um, I, I use Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, and I said, before um, that we've got Adobe Creative Pro Cloud um, and Premiere Pro, Pro is part of it. It's not cheap. It's, um, it's an expensive bit of kit, it's an expensive piece of software and you subscribe to it. So you pay um, gradually, you know, um, month on a monthly cost and that will add up. Um, but it's, it's, it's good and it's got a number of different tools to it. it. It looks very complicated, but in reality, it makes your life a lot easier to do the actual um, editing. But you don't have to do it that way. There are a lot of other different um, pieces of software out there. Um, if you're using a Mac, iMovie on the Mac um, that comes with the operating system isn't bad um, and will be able to do quite a lot of things. If you're on Windows, um, Windows Movie Maker used to be pretty good. Um, I have had a little play with the, um, the movie, the video thing that comes with Windows 10 and it's not quite as good. You can't do some of the mixing and the B-roll stuff that I'm about to show you um, this afternoon. Um, but it's, it's okay, but there is other free stuff. As I say, there are apps which you can do the whole thing on your phone. Um, I'm not going to go into that this afternoon. Um, but there are other options where you don't have to pay an awful lot of money. Now, um, last, last time when I was talking about just audio things with podcasting, if you're wanting to edit audio files, there's a fantastic public domain, completely free piece of software called Audacity, which will do all of that. Unfortunately, there isn't the same thing for video, but there's, there's, it's, it, there's reasonable. Um, there's now I, the, what I have used um, with other people, um, video pad, and I know um, that you'd used it a little bit, Maria, and you said there were some issues using video pad. Did it ask you for money after a while or something? Yeah, it was something after I got going. I can't quite remember, John. Sorry. That's okay. Um, that's popping no, up. Yeah, no problem. Because um, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you video pad. It's never asked me for money, <laughs> but I don't use it that much. I think if you use it a lot, then you might. Uh, it might start asking you for money, um, and to actually buy the full the full setup. But I'll show you. I'll show you how to get it and what what it does. But I, it was just a bit of a disclaimer. It, 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 it hasn't worked perfectly for everybody. So um, uh, it was just something I remember Maria saying before. So I'm going to share my screen. Now, I use, um, I use Premiere Pro. And like with um, uh, the, the Adobe Photoshop, there is a cut down version of it. Um, in that, that you can get Photoshop elements. There is, in fact, Premiere Pr Premier elements. Um, and you can buy that, put it on. That is a one-off cost. And it ha it's just, uh, it, it's good. It will allow you to do the things that I'm talking about today. Um, but it will have, it won't have anywhere near as many features as the full, as the full licensed Premiere Pro. Even so, buying that um is about 87 pounds now you can or you can upgrade for about 50 pounds now if this is for buying the very latest version of premiere elements 2021 
If I wanted to buy, I don't know. Now, sometimes if you put in Premier Elements 2020, sometimes, oh, good grief. Oh, no, no, that's Photoshop Elements. Yeah, Premier, if you buy the one that's just one step down from the very latest, it's a lot cheaper. Um, it might not have all the bells and whistles um, that the very latest one does, um, but you could save yourself a chunk of money by doing that. Um, as far as Photoshop is concerned, if you're but usually you need to buy the latest version of Photoshop if you've got the very latest camera, um, because then you know that the, the new version, of, if you've got a very new camera that is newer than your older version of Photoshop, then the Photoshop might not recognize it. Um, if you're shooting in a particular type of way, this isn't really the case with prem the, with the video, particularly if you're shooting the video on um, on a on an I iPhone or an iPod or something or or a, a small sort of tablet. So it's just a trick. I know it's 2021 and there is a newer version of it, but if you just look at the previous one again on Amazon and it's legal one, it's not a used one or anything like that, you can get it for quite quite a substan substantial saving. However, you can also get something for free. And this is what I, I was uh, using. There's a program called VideoPad and it's made by um, this group called NCH Software. And if you just type, type VideoPad into Google, it'll get you to here. Um, it's detected that I'm running this on a, on a Mac, um, but I, I downloaded it just fine for Windows um, on Windows 10, and it worked, it worked just exactly the same. Um, and so you can download it and it will start to run and it just starts to work. Now, there are certain things, it's a cut down version. So you can only do certain bits with it. To get the full version, you've got to pay. Um, and to pay for that, it costs £99. It's good. It is good. Um, but I've never forked out for the full version. Um, but it will do all the things that we want to do. It hasn't asked me. Um, so I think what, what Maria was saying is that it said, right, I'm not going to do any more. You need to buy. You're using this off so much. I want you to pay £99 or I'm not going to do any more with it. It's not asked me yet, um, but to be honest with you, as I say, I do most of my editing on, on Premiere Pro. There, are, there, there is plenty of other software out there for video editing, and I cannot go into, um, into all of them. If you've used one that you feel comfortable with, then that's, that, you stick with that. Um, but I'll show you the, I'll show you the, very, the, the, the process now um, for doing it. I'll give you, again, a word of warning. Um, I'm going to show you the video editing um, and it's, 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 it, it is quite tricky and I don't expect you to remember everything. Um, it's just an overview of how I do it and how I produce one of the, the little videos. If you wanted to, um, and this is the plug, if you wanted to as well, spend a day at Planet and we'll go through and I'll show you and I'll teach you how to do this and you can then shoot some video and edit it with me, and then we can do that. We're going to set these things up once we can all meet up again and do this. I'll say also, as far as future ones and future training for doing this video, it is so much easier if we can actually do it in a field or somewhere like that and actually shoot some video um, together and then edit it. Um, you see the process a lot better. It's quite difficult to do it over, over Zoom. Well, impossible. Right, so here we are. So I'm going to show you um, Premiere Pro to start off with. So this is what I normally use. So it looks, uh, welcome to Premiere Pro. I'm gonna start a new project. Uh, oh, it's front, bring it to the front, yeah, okay, right. Am I still there? It was complaining at me, just saying, and it was saying it wanted to connect. Right, I'm going to go back into Premiere Pro. Here we are. Right, um, so this is what it looks like. It's scary. It uh, looks, doesn't look great, um, but um, once you get the hang of it, it's nice and straightforward. There are 
five main areas to this screen. There's a big box in the middle here, slightly smaller box here, small box over the side, small box over the side, and then a big sort of column over here. The trouble is it's dark gray on black. So it's difficult to see where, the, where one box starts and the other uh, ends and the other one begins. Um, but I'm going to say so the first thing that you need to do is get all the clips that you shot in the first place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import. So I double clicked on that import media to start and it's brought up a little menu thing which I, I'm guessing you can't see. Um, so I'm just going to do this very quickly and just import some video here. Yes, we can see it. Oh, you can see the bit. Oh, good. So I've got some little clips on the side here. And there, so that's my little library and I can roll over them and see different things. Um, we've got some different bits. Um, as, and so we shot a lot of this during the day with, uh, with Mike. Um, and so I'm just sort of going and I can see different ones. Now, if I have, so I'm going to have, this is my main clip. So I've got Mike starting here. I'll, so, so how, how do we find out if there's a match? Oh, no, not this one. Where's the one where he says, hello, I'm Mike, Mark Park Pearson. I think it's this one. Yes. There we are. Yes. Uh, so wherever you want to do. So, you know, oh, okay. You talk, but, but so I've got a little bit of a window. I can see what's happening. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, then. Well, shall we go? Yeah. Right, that's where I'm going to start. So I've marked a beginning saying, I, I don't want that previous stuff of myself and, um, and Mike chatting. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to drag this down and onto my timeline. And you can see I've got two things. The top one is the video and the bottom one is the audio. And so if I play this, this timeline, this blue line will move across. Right. Well, I'm Mike Parker Pearson from the Institute of Archaeology at UCL, the University College London. I've made that and too small. We're here on a splendid day. So you can see that Mount. moving across. This Mount is his is voice talking away, and that's the video there and on you top. Can see behind me. Now, I mentioned at the beginning, um, uh, or a little bit beforehand, that when we shot this, I didn't have Mike wearing that fluffy mic, and it's really quite windy there. So if I click on this, I can actually go into effects at the side and I can go into, oh no, sorry, I can go into essential sound and I can say, yep, this is dialogue. And I can then say this dialogue, I wanted to clean up the noisy dialogue. Um, and it'll go through and it'll be a lot more. Sure. And as you can see behind me, so it's got rid of an awful lot of that wind blowy noise, clean up the noisy dialogue. I can also change the clarity and say, yep, yeah, we want to go. This is one thing that's changed in that it used to say male voice, female voice, but now it says high tone, low tone. But you can enhance the speech uh, for somebody with lower tones. You can even change uh, the, the, the quality of the sound there. So we've got Mike, I can have him talking. It's the site of some standing stones. Well, actually, only one's still standing. The other three have fallen over. So that's him there. I've, I've shot it so that he's over on the left, the left-hand side. We can see what he's talking about, and he's, 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 um, he's all ready to go. So with this clip, I'm not going to go into it in this much detail. What, what we'll do, so this is the equivalent of me saying to Maria, so this, this shows, actually, before I do anything else, this shows just how good he was, is that I just said, tell me about Wine Mound. And he just rattled on for a quarter of an hour, just about all this intense stuff about the standing stones. But I'm going to imagine that instead of all of that, so I'm going to delete that bit, we've had, I'm Mike Parker Pearson. So he's, he's gone into there. And then we're going to stop at that point. So I'm going to drag this clip down. It's a much shorter clip. We'll zoom in a bit. So he says, Yes. Oh. Right. Well, I'm Mike Parker Pearson from the Institute of Archaeology. Still a little bit. I want to chop away from the beginning. So I'm going to, um, I'm just going to chop 
that bit away. There we are, move that one back. So we've got... Right, well I'm Mike Parker Pearson from... Okay, Bayes. so we've got that there. Now, I might have another piece that I want to then put into this bit where he started, stopped saying, I'm Maria and I work for Together for Change, Together for Change is this. And then there's another clip where he goes, or Maria goes and talks about um, cream teas. And that bit is in here. So this is the cream tea bit. I'm going to pop that there. So now. I wasn't terribly impressed with these. He said, well, could be a circle, but and 28. So do you see there's that big jump? And this is how I get rid of the jump. If I have another piece, let's have a piece of B roll. I've shot another piece um, where he's not talking. And I'm going to have that there. And I, I could be having pictures of other people. There we are, we'll have that. And I'm just going to have... One of them was W.F. Grimes, Welsh archaeologist who later became director of the Institute of Archaeology in London, where I work. Uh, Peter Grimes, as his friends called him, wasn't terribly impressed with these. He said, well, could be a circle, but in 2018 we carried out um, further geophysics and trial excavation. Oh, yeah, I'll just wait for him to... Further geophysics, we threw everything at it. Magnetometry. Earth resistance survey. There we are. So put in another piece over the top. That's the bit of elastoplast that I've put over. That's the bit that's B-roll. Now that, if it had been together for change and then talking about it there, and then Maria goes on to talk about um, cream teas, I could then have, uh, towards the end of it, um, pictures of uh, people sort of in a hall, um, eating sort of, having some cream teas, drinking some cups of tea, and then it cuts back to Maria. And this is how you do it. It's, if you see, look at anything on say Wales Today or one of the news programmes, you'll see it used so many times where they talk to somebody and then all of a sudden they show a car going past or a picture of the hospital that they happen to be standing outside of or something there. And that what they'll have done is that's how they stitched together um, the, uh, the, the interview. So that they've got the person actually talking. Another thing that you'll see, Maria, were you about to ask something? Yeah. Uh, your main perception. I just wondered if you could put a still in there, if you could just put you absolutely. Know, a, a photo of a cream tea. <laughs> yes, absolutely, you could. Um, and so, yes, you could. So it doesn't have to be um, like a, a video or anything. You could have a still. And so just putting, so I'm going to just quickly go back and, and share that little bit. Um, so those, that extra, so if I layer it, so even though the video is there underneath, you only see the top layer. Um, if I put in, let's see if I can get another um, another image. So actually, these these ones, these these DNG ones, it might have a problem with this because it's in a, a file format. Yeah, it doesn't like that file format. Um, I'm going to things that would make more sense would be something like uh, this drone footage. So if I chop him out. And I have this. So this was taken with a completely different camera. And it's having a bit of a problem with that. So I'm not going to show that one. Uh, but yes, you could you could put in a, you could put in a, a still, you could put in um, a picture that someone had drawn um, or something like that. Um, any sort of graphic. In on that point as well is that you can also have. So this is if I put a picture. So if I put a picture to cover that, that bit, so I'm going to go back to, um, I'm going to go back to Mike. I'm going to put this one down over onto there. Oh, not that much. Uh, that one. Um, and I'm going to put this clip over the, this elastoplast over that bit. So it could be a still picture. Um, and if I had the still picture that was the same size 
as the video underneath, then all you would see is the picture. But you could also put a picture over the whole thing. And you would think, what on, the, what on earth is the point of doing that? But if I had a picture going over the whole thing, but it's smaller, than the actual bit in the in the corner let's see now i haven't prepared this so i'm going to see if i can go back into documents let's go into yeah we'll have that so if i put this still oops let's go to the beginning come on here we go oh Here in and out. There we are. Right. Let me go back to the beginning. So I'm going to put this this picture. I'm going to drag it and put it onto there. And then I'm going to zoom in on that little bit. And I'm going to stretch it so that it takes over the whole of the uh, whole of the um, the one. And then what I could do now, if I have this here, so rather than having that bit in the corner, I could then sort of squash it down and move it about. There we are. Right. Let's squash it, make it smaller, move it up there. Um, and if I had one with a transparent background. Well, I'm Mike Parker Pearson from the Institute of Archaeology. So that's UCL, having a still UCL picture UCL up in the top corner or wherever it is. Splendid day. Which is your logo. Um, and it's that easy. And it just, uh, you can have that. Often what I'll do is I don't have that through the whole thing, or you can make it slightly transparent, or, or it just gets a bit distracting. And all you can do is get it to just fade in. Um, and fade out at the end, um, but it's that simple. So not only can you do a still that takes over the whole of the page, um, but you can also have a little still that has uh, that, that has your logo on there. I'm going to talk a bit actually now while we're on this about um, about making the uh, uh, about make a sound quality um, and about making so that you can hear him. I already talked about having this, and by saying if I have it as dialogue, I can say clean up the noisy dialogue, and it'll cut out a lot of extraneous noise. Um, that's one thing. The other thing is now I might have said, oh, I want to have some music in the background so that some sweeping sort of music that's going to go. Now I don't know if I've got. Uh, I will have some and I'll have it saved when let's have a look. We'll have it in the. Um, we'll have an audio. There we are. We'll just have one of these um, just something that I did before. So this is a bit of audio and I'm going to drag this audio down into the beginning of this. Come on, let's go down. Come on, audio clip. I know he's a drag. Oh, it's not dragging for some reason. I can drag the music onto the back of here. Anyway, so you will have some music, uh, the talking along the top, and the music underneath. Now, what you can do is that if you've got the music again and un underneath in one big long. Um, sort of continuous piece of music underneath. You want the music to play at the beginning, but as soon as they start talking, it cuts out. That's called ducking. And so you can put the music in as the background and then say, duck it against the dialogue. And Premiere Pro will do it all for you. It'll work it all out. Um, and so that it'll, um, as soon as you start talking, it, the music will stop playing because otherwise you're sitting there um, having, to, having to change it um, all the time. I didn't share that screen, did I? Um, and I was just talking, but you can have that anyway, you can have it there and you can duck it against it. How, now that I can imagine for somebody with a, a hearing impairment or somebody struggling with that, that would still be confusing. So the next thing is, how do you actually put um, subtitles on? Um, and also, how do you put subtitles on if you want to change, uh, have, have your video as bilingual? So I'm going to show you how to do that. 
So we've got Mike here and he's going to be talking. And if I want to, so what, just as I put the logo up in the top corner, I can put a text box on here. Um, I'm just going to put it here. I'm just going to click in there and I'm going to do, hi, my name is Mike. And do you see it's turned up and it's got, it's got a particular length in time as well. So today at Wine Mound. Uh, Wine Mound is in the Priscelli Hills of North Pembrokeshire. And so it switches. So if I'd done that, so I can change the length of this so that when he's say, saying what he's saying, I can get it to match Wine up Mound. with... Uh, Wine Mound is in the... So I can get it to match up um, with, put the text on with what he's saying. And it comes up almost like another graphic. You can change the font. You can put a background on it so that if it happened to be in a white background, you can change the colour of the font. You can change it so that it stands out nicely. Um, it is tricky. It's tricky to match it up and to get all the um, and to get the, the the words to match up with what they're actually saying. It's not as tricky as actually lip syncing the, the sound to somebody actually moving their mouth, but it is a lot of work to actually do that. Before I knew this trick, I sat down and I transcribed what people were saying um, and wrote it all down um, so that I could then type it in. But then somebody told me, and I can't remember his name, but he was at the National Park um, and I never let on that I didn't know this. <laughs> and so I thought, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, everyone does that. Thinking, oh, God, I've been sat typing it all out while they were talking, um, trying to do shorthand or something. Um, if you make a rough cut of your video so that it actually says what you want it to say and you upload it to YouTube and then in the settings where you upload it to YouTube, you say the language, specify the language and say that the language is English, if, it, if they're talking in English. Um, what it then will do, it will make a transcript automatically using its voice recognition. Um, and you've got a piece of text which you can then copy and paste in, uh, or you can copy and paste it into something like Word or Notepad or something like that, and then chop little bits out of it and put it onto your video. Makes it an awful lot easier. It it's, I'd say it's about ninety percent good. <laughs> there are things that it doesn't get right, um, so it, it it doesn't know the different types of there there there. Um, and so you, you've got to you've got to look at what you're actually putting on there, but um, it makes actually making the subtitles an awful lot easier and you can split it. What I tend to do is then I split the sentences or what's going to fit nicely on a page and I put the sentence on and then I drag that that little icon bit at the top, that box at the top. So it fits over where they say that sentence. If I'm wanting to make my video bilingual so that I've got um, Welsh subtitles, for example, so if I, I've interviewed in, in English, um, but then I want to show that it's got Welsh, is that I did that, we had the English video, said that it's in English, uploaded it to YouTube, got the English trans transcript, um, and then um, did change the words to to suit you know the, so that they were gr grammatically correct and then got that translated into welsh now my welsh isn't brilliant but it's good enough so that i could then put the welsh into the right bit of what they were saying so that when they were talking the welsh subtitles came up it takes a while it does take a while to do so for example when i was doing things that i had to do this for the chariot project that because it was for the national museum the national museum wanted everything the english videos with subtitles in english the welsh videos with subtitles in welsh so you had to do it all that way um to do a three minute video it took me about half a day um to actually get it all done um surely yeah, um, just a question from a point of view of um, Premier Pro, because I've not used it. I've always used Intelli Studio, which came with my camera for things yeah. I've done. And um, does Premier Pro have a way of in putting in a sub video onto the onto this so that we could have the sign interpreted yes. um, element on it? 
Yes, you could. Um, and just in the same way as um, as I showed having the logo up in the corner. Now, if um, the way I would do it, first of all, and there probably is, is, a, is a better way, is that I would have um, somebody, so I, I would have the actual interview and somebody talking. And so you would have that as your baseline. Um, that would be almost like your metronome mark and everything sort of runs off that. I would then play that and then shoot a video of the person doing their sign language so that their sign language is at the same speed as the person yes. talking. Yeah. Um, but, and but so my, I, I would, my package, the Infelli Studio, doesn't allow you to put in a video yeah. in a video. So yeah. I've audition. never done it, but that's how I would do it. And I would put it up. So just like I put the video, you could put the video in, but have it in a small box in the corner. Um, this is the thing where Premiere Pro is expensive, but it does do the job. Um, it, and on the, yeah, can I just go? You, you didn't actually say the price before. But I just was looking on Google when when we had a break. Yeah, go on. Um, and and it's it's it shows a monthly fee uh, on their main site, but I did find there was a, a package fee as yes. well. So the package fee is a once-off, so we might have to get grant funding for it as a one-off cost. Is that there aren't any um, hidden costs if you buy the the, the package? Um, as far as I know, with, with Premiere Pro, even with the pack, that, so they do packages where they'll have like the photography package, which only costs like £11 or something a month. But then you only get Photoshop and Premiere Pro or something like that. So the packages are, they're still monthly subscriptions to my knowledge. Um, I, it, I didn't see it as a one-off. It was just, I thought it was only elements that well, was... No, I, I, but I, from, I sort of I put in for the Premiere Pro mm. uh, one-off one -off cost and it, and it came up with like a box. You can wow. buy it, you know, the package yeah. and just load it. Like, I, I would recommend, and again, I, um, whenever I, bu I buy stuff for Planet and particularly things like Adobe, um, we use uh, Pew pugh.co.uk um, in Aberystwyth uh, because the reason I use them is because we used to buy our software through, uh, for Milford Comp through them um, and the nice thing about them is they know the software and they know the packages and you can buy the license through them. The other good thing about it is that if you're a charity, they may well have um, uh, sort of deals that they could do and get and and, um, and work it out, uh, do it that way. Um, by for I've got a personal license um, for Adobe, and Adobe are very helpful as far as that is concerned. Um, but for buying things for an organisation, I would recommend using using another agency. And Pew Pew work great. They're Welsh and they um, they work as a sort of intermediary, and they don't take a cut or anything. They they they'll they'll help you. You buy it through them. Um, that that's what I'd recommend doing. Um, because again, if you've got it and all of a sudden it, it was the wrong package, you can go back to them and say, hold on, you said it would be this, that and the other. And then it's Pew that would say, oh, no, sorry, we need to change all of that rather than, rather than you take it. Um, I, so if, it, it were, if it was for you, your, your group, then, then I would do it that way. Because I know also the reason why I, I because I can't afford the full Adobe license but I happened to lecture at the, uni at the college and um, you, there, there are some very good Adobe um, student tutor discounts. So if you happen to work also as a tutor or you're studying for anything, it is worth getting the Adobe license that way because they've, they've got a lot of um, a lot of their software. It's not free, still got to pay for it, but it's, it's cut it. It's, it's, it's pretty much the industry standard. Um, for that sort of level of, of graphics. Right, halfway through, so we're, uh, half an hour. Um, right, so that was Premiere Pro, that's what I use. But you might be thinking, I can't afford all this sort of stuff. So there's another one, that's that NCH. And the reason I showed you the, um, the Premiere Pro thing is because this NCH looks very similar. Um, and this one's free in that you've got um you've got a, a video 
track timeline down here and the audio down at the bottom. You can see what's being actually done at the big at the top and you can add your files. It's, so the boxes have moved around a little bit, but you can still do it. Um, and what I'm going to do, so if I add some files and we may as well stick with old, um, uh, we'll stick with, with Mike um, because he works so well. So we'll have Mike over there. So we'll import him and then I'll uh, add another file. We'll have something else. Uh, we'll have, um, yeah, we'll have that. Okay. So this one here is just something that I shot with the drone and here we've got Mike um, and we'll have another one. I'm gonna add another file in here. We'll have another one of Mike just talking um, there. Okay. So like with this, if I hold, if I click on one of the, um, the, this is the main interview that I want and I've got a red starter and a blue end so I can play this. It's the same wobbly bit. Right. So that's me. I've marked in where I wanted to start. And I can move this timeline a little bit. That's him talking. And we'll stop round about. We'll stop there. And I'll set the end. So I've got a little bit and I've marked the beginning and I've marked the end. Now, the bit that's different is so that that clip there, I've marked the beginning, and I've marked the end of what I want. I'm going to drag that now down onto here. And that's my clip of Mike starting off and then putting it in there. That doesn't look right. But uh, anyway, we've got, so we've got him actually talking. Yeah, the, the beginning bit hadn't set. So what I might do is do that again. So I'm going to um, get rid of that, I think. No, I'll, I'll just show you actually rather than do it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another piece onto the end. We're just going to do the B-roll. So let's move along. There we are. So this is the start up to here. There we are, and then we'll move this. This is where he's finishing. That's the end. Come on, stop talking. Set the end. So now I'm going to drag that bit onto there. So now I've got the bit where I've got Mike starting to talk. and it jumps. So to get rid of that B-roll, I'm just going to have this little piece of, um, of sort of footage that I took. So I'm going to move that. That's what I didn't do in the first one. And then that's going to go a little bit further on. We'll stop that. And I can put that just there. And I'll move it along a wee bit. So now I've got my elastoplast. So I've got Mike talking. Ah, now this is, can you, I've got both of the things actually talking now in the same place. So I need to mute that. There we are. So I've just got Mike talking. Then I've got one. And I realized I dragged the wrong bit over. But just to show that everything that I had done with the Premiere Pro, I can do it with the um, with the that free version. It's not as nice. Um, it's a bit more clunky, and I make mistakes with it because it's I don't know. I it just it feels. Um, <laughs> well, we were sort of talking about the the audacity. It's not as slick. Um, it it feels a bit unrefined, 
but it's free and you can't knock it and it will do what you want it to do. One thing that I haven't shown you, and I'm not going to go into it, but they have these things called transitions so that as one um, clip goes into the other one, you can get it to either fade in or dip down into black and then dip out of black so that you don't have jarring sort of jumps from one picture to the other one. Um, it's, it's, it works, it's good, um, but you pretty much get what you pay for. I do not think um, with that video pad that you would be able to do um, the uh, screen in screen so that you'd be able to have someone doing the sign language. Just don't think it's uh, that, that good. The bit that you get, so if you do buy, uh, get the free version video pad, here we are, then you can have two tracks, one on top of the other one. The, um, if you want to get more, here we are, other image clips here um, available to purchase. This is the bit that if you want to have more layers on top of each other, um, then it's, um, you have to buy it and it's about £100, I think. To put some, um, put subtitles on, you can put text, uh, add text, um, you can um, add different bits and pieces in there. You can, there's even got a subtitles bit in there um, where it'll, it'll put it on. It's good, but the bit that I don't like about it is that I don't feel I've got as much control over the video as I have with Premiere Pro. Um, it'll, it'll, it'll do it on the cheap, it will do it as a free version, um, but I wouldn't want to be using it all the time. But it's one of these things, though, that if you are having a club um, and you want to try it out, it'll get you started. And then if you think, oh, yeah, I want to I want to use this more often, um, then you might think, well, maybe we do need to either buy elements or subscribe to um, the Premiere Pro or buy the package that uh, the Pew might be doing. Another option is that if you've got video and you want to learn how to use it and dip your toe in the water and maybe make a video now and again, we've got that facility built at Planet so that if you wanted to come and use some of our software um, and use some of the computers, um, you wouldn't be able to take them away, I'm afraid, um, but you can use it on site with us, um, then we've got that set up when, when things, restrictions ease a little bit more and we can do that. Um, it also means that you can do that um, a little with a little less, um, you haven't got time, sort of the deadline of time sort of hanging over your head. You can take your time to actually make the thing. And that's the bit actually that um, I find is that actually shooting the video, um, so that thing with Wine Mound took, I don't know, um, about an hour or so to shoot up in the Preselli's. Um, on top of getting up there and doing all that sort of thing and then thinking about what we were going to talk. Editing takes much longer. Um, editing takes really quite a while so that you've got to listen to all the clips. You've got to think about what they are, in what order they are, and then put them all together, do the subtitles, do the titles at the beginning. The other thing actually that reminds me when uh, Maria asked about, can you put a picture in at the, um, can you put a picture in there? is that often what I'll do is right at the end, I will have made a picture, um, one graphic, the size, the same size as the whole video and put the sponsor's logos on it or your own logo or the people who funded it or things like that so that you can have an end credits that you've actually done. A lot of these video packages will have a way in which you can put credits on, but you can make it look so much nicer by having a picture that you've made in, well, I actually I did it in Photoshop, but you could make it in whatever graphics tool you want, save it as a, a JPEG or a, um, a, any other sort of still image, put that at the end so that as the person's talking and their talking gradually fades out, you've got your end credits. So you can um, say, put your funders um, sort of logo on there, but also your own logo. Um, and on a lot of these things, if you're showing it on a screen um, in a big sort of hall or whatever, that's the bit that remains. Um, and it, it's just something that's always handy to have um, in that I'll have an end credit screen, which I use for so many different videos, which have got Plan Ed, Datris, and um, the Community Lottery Fund. And I'll put that at the end of each of my different ones just to keep them happy. 
So putting the subtitles in um, is one thing, making the sound nice and clear um, is another one. Um, and then whether you actually have music in the background or not is, is to be honest with you, a contentious issue. I'll be brutally honest um, in that before, um, when I first started making the videos, I did not like having music in the background. I, I hated it. I just didn't think it was right. I thought, oh, it's too cheesy. Um, and, uh, but Ewan at, at Plan Ed loves a bit of music in the back of his videos. And he likes to have nice sort of epic sounds and all this sort of stuff. And well, he's the boss. So I put it in and I must admit grudgingly, I'm coming round to his point of view is that sometimes particularly, particularly if you haven't got speech in there, um, it will add a lot of atmosphere to, uh, to, your, um, to, to your video. What I'll tend to do is that with that, right I, I, now I haven't shown everybody this. So I'm, I, I know I showed this in the podcasting one um but i didn't i haven't not everyone's done the podcasting um course so if i go to google and you've got to have a google account and you go to youtube and you get your normal sort of youtube videos and things turn up but you then need to go to your videos so you go into your studio. There we are. So these are the ones that I had before. Now, if you scroll down on the side here, there's one down the bottom called audio library. So I apologize to people who were here before, but on here, there is so many different pieces of music that if they've got the license type like this, you can just use as uh, as background for your for your um, for your piece of video. Now, if I've got a picture of, say, um, I don't know, uh, we're wanting to do a bit of an advert um, an advert for well, Tiercoid. I've been working with them, and they want to have an advert sort of showing their woodland skills and what they do and they want a picture of the drone flying over the top of the uh, of the woodland um, and then moving away into the into the background and so I would shoot a film and then edit it down to about maybe a minute what works best is if I can get the duration to round about a minute so I can search through this um, I can say I can put a filter into it and we'll go for the duration. Um, and I can say, we'll say longer than one minute. And then I'll order them. Right, are you doing it? Um, and then also do the duration. So longer than a minute and there. So the first ones that are about a minute long. So my video track is a minute. Now, if I choose one that is um, a minute long, then the music will begin and end with the video and it fits in nicely rather than chopping off abruptly when the video ends. So I can choose something like, uh, let's have a look. Now that probably is a little bit gloomy, <laughs> but you can go through all of these different ones and you choose something that's quite sort of epic as it flies over the top of the trees and does all this stuff. There are some dreadful things out there, um, some really awful sort of uh, pieces of software there, but uh, pieces of music out there, but they really do add quite a lot to your um, to your to your um to your track so let's say for example i did this i'm going to check i've no idea what this one's like um so i've got this one i'm going to download it there we are right okay done stop share Right, so I've downloaded that little music. I could add that one in then, pull it in as another track. I'll show you how I do that. So I'm going to add another piece of, oops, uh, yep, yeah, that's sharing. 
So I've, I've, it should be in the downloads. That's it, import it. Drag it onto there, there we are. And so now if I go to the beginning of this, I can play it. Right, well I'm Mike Parker Pearson from the Institute of Archaeology at UCL, University College London. And now that I can imagine is one of the things that Shirley would say that is completely distracting. That is not what I want. Um, it's doing, and so this is where I think, all right, I need to do some ducking on here. So I've already said that this one, he's got some dialogue and I've cleaned it up. This one here, I'm going to say is music. And I want to have some ducking, ducking against dialogue. There we are. And I'm going to generate it all. So when he talks, there shouldn't be any music. Right. Well, I'm Mike Parker Pearson from the Institute or it's of quieter. at UCL, University College London. And we're here on a splendid day. But that's still distracting. Um, so if I was having somebody um, talking to camera like that, I wouldn't have music in the background. But if I had a couple of other pieces of... Uh, somebody saying maybe one word or, or some, um, you know, just not an awful lot, then you could duck it again so that you get the music coming through and it just sort of dips down naturally as the other person is talking. It makes a completely different, as a completely different complexion to the video itself um, by when you, when you do that ducking. Right. Last little bit. I've got, I'm going to spend about 10 more minutes now um, just talking about. So you've, you've cut the video, you've put all your bits on there, you've changed all that, you've got music in there, um, you've got uh, the B-roll sort of chop going over any of the little sort of crops and things like that. How do you, what do you do with it then? Right, so I'm going to go back to Premiere Pro. It's the same for uh, the video pad or any of the other ones, is that once you've got it, and you're happy with it, let, I'm going, I'm, and I'm going to chop this last little bit out because it's, um, right, there we are. So it starts at the beginning. So that I could have this bit at the beginning there. So it says, hello, my name is Mike. I've got the Planet logo in there. Um, right at the end, I could have all my credits at the end. I'm ready to go. I will then go to file. And I want to export the, uh, the media. Uh, now then, can you see this window that's popped up? Yes. Yes, there we are. So a thing's come up there so I can preview the whole video if I want to. Um, so it's nearly three minutes long. Um, and then you can say there's, there's all this sort of stuff which looks really complicated. Um, but one thing that you can do um, in Premiere Pro and with other ones is that you can choose presets. So what format are you using? You can say, right, I'm going to have it. Usually what I'll do is this thing called H264. Um, I tend to go for that one, but the preset now is, do I want to export it for Facebook, full HD? or um, Facebook, a smaller one, high quality, just for a mobile device, something that's going to be put onto Twitter, something that might go onto Vimeo or something that might go onto YouTube. You can choose what sort of quality and it's called the aspect ratio, the, 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 how, how wide and how tall it is. Um, you can choose that here. Um, so is it going to be like in CinemaScope? Or is it going to be as a, a, a sort of TV um, size? Um, and also how, how so the, the quality that, you, uh, that you're going to choose. So I could say, right, I'm going to put it onto uh, YouTube and I'm going to put it down onto YouTube full HD. Let's have really great. Um, and then I can choose what name I'm going to output it as. Mike, save it go and it'll start exporting and so you might think well why don't you export it all the time as the highest quality why bother with these ones that are um you know sd um or you know just for twitter 640 by 640 
why on earth would you want it like this? Well, the main reason is that if I export it as um, match source, the high bitrate match source, that is the highest quality one that I can do at the moment, really high quality one, is that the, the file that's produced will be a really big one. It'll be too big to send in an email, say. If I did it as Twitter, say 640 by 640, it's still the same video, but it won't be quite as high quality um, and it'll be a much smaller file. And so with that, and so that's what, so, um, and you think, well, why would that matter? Why, why should that care? And so that one where I said it's a high bitrate, that's how we could actually show it on the side of the, the massive sort of screen in the Merlin theater, because we'd saved it as a really high quality one. If we'd saved it as a lower quality one, um, then it wouldn't, it would have looked horrible and all pixelated and blobby and stuff on the, on the, on the wall. Um, and again, you might think, well, why on earth would I want to save it like that? Well, it means that then, um, because it's a, a smaller size, if all you're going to be looking at it on is, say, Twitter, where you're probably looking at it on a phone or something, um, you don't need ultra high quality. And if it's ultra high quality and it's a big size, a big fill, um, and it's a big file size, it's going to take ages to download and it'll buffer. Um, you get that little, it'll stop every now and again where the little thing circle goes round. So why it catches up with itself. If you have it as a smaller file size, it's not as good quality, but you don't get that buffering and it'll download all really quicker and just sort of play naturally. So which one do you go for? Um, if you're wanted, so there's two different ways, well, a lot of different ways in which you can actually show your video. You might want to put it onto your Facebook page, in which case I would download it and squash it and use one of the Facebook presets and this will work nicely on Facebook. And then you upload it to Facebook and it, it'll do a little bit of squashing for you. And then it'll just work. Um, it'll work on your Facebook page. Um, you might want to import it in, um, and actually embed it into your web page or your website. In which case, again, I would go for a sort of middle ground, nice and easy, so that it will um, doesn't have to be the highest quality, um, the biggest file size, um, but it, you can have it of a reasonable quality, so it will actually show on the um, on on the screen and look good. Um, actually, when you look at it on the computer screen, if you're wanting to show it on a projector as a presentation though go for the highest quality because you're going to have it on downloaded onto your computer anyway um, and connect your computer up to the thing so you're not bothered about download speeds you want it as high quality as you can so that it looks really good on the full screen an alternative though is to um, and what i do for an awful lot of them is to i record it in full high quality and then upload it to YouTube. And then YouTube will squash it down for you and get it into the right um, sort of aspect ratio so it looks nice on screen. Once it's on YouTube, and if I, I think I've still got it on the, let me see if I've still got it on the screen. Let me go back to my library. So if I go back to um, my channel, so I've got some here. So this is the last one that I did was with Saunders Foot Bay um, Cold thing, is that you can get a shareable link. And I've copied that link. And then I can then send that link out to people um, to say, oh, you can look at and it'll just take you straight to YouTube. You could also put that link, um, you can put the link into um into your page um, if you're making a wordpress website you can put that link in into your page and say oh yeah just get the video from there um, and on the, when the page loads up it pulls the video from youtube and it just plays on there so that you don't have to upload it to wordpress or anything um, it's a lot easier uh, to do that and you know that it'll work on youtube the downside I've found, particularly if you're using with um, with community groups or doing anything on a screen where you're showing it to people, is that when the YouTube video finishes, you get adverts for a lot of other YouTube videos and you have no control over what those adverts could be. 
Um, so you could get all sorts of things coming up as the next type of thing, and you don't have a control over that. So that's the real downside. Plus side with YouTube, it just works, it's stable. Um, and it's um, and and you don't pay for it. You're not paying a lot, uh, you know, loads for it. Um, and it's it's a good way to just have that link and put it into things. Just watch out for what comes up um, on your screen after you've played it. Um, I'll concur with that as well. Um, I used to just put videos onto our Southern Care website, and I was just told off by the website hosting people because it was just slowing it down. So just yeah. get a YouTube channel, put a link on, and you're away. Yeah, uh, and be, yes, because if you if you put the actual video on your website, um, because that your 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 web hosts are worried about like bandwidth, the number of people viewing it, and and it, downloading a video is going to take up an awful lot of, um, of of just the data coming down. Whereas, yeah, if you put it on YouTube, they handle all of that, and it does it quite nicely. Um, I've covered loads in the last <laughs> in the last two hours. I'm re I, I do apologise in a lot of ways because I'm sure you're shell shocked at the end of this one. In that I started right from the beginning of talking to the person, getting the right sort of kit, and thinking about nice sort of open questions so that you can add some, you can say something, and then they just sort of talk. And you, and the more they talk, the less editing you have to do. Then you ask the next next question, they talk a bit more, and you can chop you out. Um, having the, the microphone, microphones, it's an obvious thing to say, but if sound quality is important, and it always is, um, then choosing a decent microphone is, is, is paramount. Those, uh, that Rhodes Link uh, filmmakers, um, the filmmaker kit is expensive, nearly £300, but it's good quality and the sound is good quality. Um, and and that's, that's, uh, that, that's worth more than actually the video in itself, in a way. Um, then you, or the other option is to just shoot your video and show things and then record a voiceover afterwards where you're in a quiet room and with a decent microphone and you can record it on top of that afterwards. Then we had a little look at editing. Um, there are free editors out there, but it really is, you do get what you pay for. The more you pay, the better the editor tends to be. Um, there are lots of different ones, um, and it's just a, a way of to sort of getting rid of the bits that you don't want, having that B-roll as an elastoplast to cover over the bits that you don't want people to see, um, and then you can edit it all together, put your logos in and your titles and all that sort of stuff at the end. But you do have to pay for that, I'm afraid. Um, and then finally is what you do with it um, when you've actually cut your video, edited it all together, put it all into one place. I'd recommend sticking it on YouTube in the first place, because then all you need to do is use the link from YouTube. And YouTube is the thing that actually handles all the bandwidth. And if you want to have a more sort of a spend a day and just gradually and say, look, tell me that again, but take your time. Get in touch with me at Planet and we can do something there. OK, thank you, John. And what, what are we doing next week? We've got an hour booked with you next week. as well. And next week, hopefully, I'm going to have my colleague Sophie Jenkins uh, will come in and she is going to look at how you do this whole process, but on your phone not using a computer, but working all the way through that way. Um, using, because I haven't even talked about apps. There are loads of different apps now. It's a very popular way of actually making videos, um, particularly for social media. She knows far more about that than I do. Brilliant. Okay, well, um, has anyone got any further questions for John? Or are you going to save them all up for next week? Yeah, save more for Sophie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, if anybody wants to try some of the kit as well, if you wanted to come to Planet and just see what the the video kit is like, uh, we can try it. I do shoot with a proper video camera as well, um, but I was just saying the iPods work pretty good. Okay, great. So um, before I let you go, thank you very much, John. And can I 
give you uh, give a little plug for our social media masterclass, which is at 10 a.m. on the 12th of May. And we're just about up to capacity on it, but I'm going to take a few more just because uh, <laughs> I feel like it. Um, and that's going to be run by Angus from WebAdept in St. David's, and he's really good because I've done his classes before. So um, thank, you. thank you very much, everyone. And see Oh, one last thing. Oh, if, if, if somebody wanted the kit list, I've got a PDF, which I can send to Maria. Brilliant. Of what yeah. I used, yeah. I'll send that round to everyone then. Thank you. All right, see you next week. Thank you. I know. Bye. 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 Bye.